Okay, in this Grasshopper Metaball tutorial, I want to show you how we can model this in Grasshopper and it's going to be easy and you can learn this technique to model many different things. This can be used in architecture, the Metaball volume, or you can also use this for industrial design or to design a desk or something like that or a table. So uh, as you can see, I can change the location of these tables, uh, endings, and I can just change this, okay? A little bit of uh, the energy of the algorithm is uh, consumed to produce the 3D solid. And then we can also change the height of this, as you can see here. Uh, we can increase the number of the sections we want or decrease it. Okay, let's just go to 15. And you can see it, okay? And we can also uh, change the form as I can, uh, as you can see here, I will change this and this will also produce uh, different things. So this tutorial will help you to produce uh, different results from Metaball and how you can use it to produce a parametric table or something like that. Uh, you can also check out up here. Uh, I will put it in a card. You can also check the Grasshopper course we have also released and uh, check the course and look at the uh, lesson we have added to that. And then you can also then return to this tutorial. Okay, so let's just get started from scratch. And you can also download this file. So let's just get started. I'm going to uh, start with three points here. And let's just put the bifocals plug in here. So what we want to do is to produce multiple points. Let's just start with three or four. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, and what I want to do is to go to the mesh, uh, go to, to this triangulation part, and go to the metaball. 2D, as you can see here, a 2D metaball isocurve. So what I want to do is to explain how you can use this to produce that form. First of all is the point, uh, point charge locations. If I just return to the algorithm, as you can see here, because we are using the 2D uh, uh, metaball, what we need is to produce a metaball in each of these levels. So these are each 2D metaballs extruded, okay? So what we need is to produce uh, different 2D metaballs in the different layers and then extrude them. So what we can do is to, first of all, you can also use this technique for other models. I'm going to go to the curve section and use this line SDL to draw a line from these starting points. And let's just go to the direction for the Z and give this a number. So we can change the length of the line, okay? So here we go, you can see that we can change that line and we can also change the location of those points. And what we want to do is to first divide these lines into uh, different points. So what I want to do is to type divide curve and divide these curves into maybe 15 different divisions and as you can see here we have these points but because we had four uh, line and we divided into 15 points we will have four groups of 16 points so these are four groups of 16 points but because we are using the metaball 2d and we want to produce a metaball in this height okay in this height so we have to put these points into groups of four and not in groups of this way. We want them in this way. So you can also uh, check out the what are these icons, the flattened graph tutorial. I will also put this in the card here. So let's just do this. What I want to do is to use the flip matrix tool. And let's just do this, the flip matrix. And when we give this, uh, the four groups of 16 will be go into 16 groups of four. I've also explained that in the course. So for those who are the course members, they can check out a, a special tutorial which I've explained about the flip matrix and how you can use it. Okay, so we have now 15 different groups in the height and we can give these as the point charge locations, okay? So these are the points 
which are producing the charges, okay? So these are the points. Let me just show you which is producing the metabol charges. And you can also watch the metabol tutorial. I will also put that. We had a tutorial about metabol custom uh, about, I don't know, maybe four or five, month, uh, five months ago. And you can also learn about how metabol custom works, okay? So let's just get back to our tutorial. And uh, what we want to do is to give this the plane of the section of the metabol. So we need those planes. And we, we can simply go here and uh, let's just go to the list item. I'm going to use a list item to take one of those groups. So if I go here and give the list item to the flip matrix, what it's going to do is to, it's going to pick one of those points from each group, right? Uh, so if I give this list item to the flip matrix and the default index is zero, what it's going to do, let's just put a panel to this so you can understand what's happening. The list item will pick this point, this point, it will pick all the zero index of those. So what will happen is that we will just have one series of points here. Let me just show you by highlighting these points. You can see this is the first group. And that doesn't really matter uh, because we can uh, select any of those groups we want. And I've just, just uh, chose the first one and give this uh, XY plane. So let's just give this an XY plane. And this is enough, because if you just want to connect an XY plane to all of those, this will do it four times and will produce four different metabols. So let's just give this to the one of those lines and we can just give this to the plane. Here we go. And the last part we have to produce is the isocurve intersection. And as you can see here, uh, let me just highlight this or maybe just produce a pipe on this so you can understand what's happening. And where is it? Okay, here we go. And what I want to do is to produce a curve, which I will also divide on the same height and say that I want a metal ball to just flow on those points. And that will just con uh, constrain to your metal ball and make it uh, available based on that. So let's just change this so you can understand. Okay, I want to change this curve and here we go. Let's just go and see it. Okay, so you can see if I define this curve as the metal balls are uh, going through that, we can have different results. So how can we do this in Grasshopper? Uh, we can simply pick one of those. So what? I'll, let's just turn this off. Uh, I'm going to go again to list item, pick one of those lines. The first one is enough. And let's just focus on this. What I want to do is to define three points. You can also define many points as, mu uh, as much as you want. Uh, and move these first, uh, the starting point in the x direction, the last point in the x direction, and maybe another point on this line in the X direction, we can connect those together to produce that parametric curve. So here we go. We can simply just uh, start with, let's just turn those division points off, this one off, and now we can start with this line. So let's just go to the curve. Uh, we need a point on curve. Let's just start from the zero, then go to the half of it. Maybe you just want it on the uh, line and at the end we just go to the end so we have zero this one and the one okay and now we want to move them this is really easy you can move them in the x direction but remember if your line is here perhaps we have to move that in the minus x direction so let's just give this a number 12.56 okay and let's just put this here. So you can see that I can change the location of this point and then we can also give this to the middle of the point. Here we go. And at the end we will have this here. Okay, so you can see I have produced three points. That's fine. We can go to the curve section and use the interpolate uh, menu tool to just produce that. The first vertices, the second, I'm using the shift key and the last one. Here we go. And now what we have to do is to produce the same points in the heights 
we just produced here on this curve because it has to be in the same height and we have a 2D metal ball. So we can go to the intersection and use this curve plane intersection now. Use this curve. The intersection planes are right here. Doesn't really matter because it just intersects. It's an infinite plane. And now we have those points in the same height and we can say move it from here. That's it. So let's just turn everything off. But I guess that we can see the lines and the points. And now we can change the height. Right? We can change the location of the points. You can see that this is producing different results. Yes. And then we can just change the section of that, right? That's it. Let's just increase the height a little bit. So it's going to be a simple table. And just move this a little bit backward, okay? And at the end, we have to produce that. Remember, I have explained that in the metal ball section, that if you just connect a surface to this, it's going to take a while because this is a polyline. If I bake this, uh, you can see that this is a simple polyline. So if you want to make this a little bit faster, you can just rebuild this curve into a degree three count of maybe 120 that will just help us to have exact form of the metal ball and now if I connect the surface to that this is going to be faster because it's going to produce a surface based on a nerve curve and then we can extrude that so let's just extrude and finish this tutorial we can extrude this in the z direction and now we need to have the height of that because we worked on the division. If you remember, we worked on this. It's just uh, fine to go back to those points and pick two points to find the distance between them. So what I want to do is to use the list item. And now if I give this to the list item, it will just choose from all of those groups. Let's just put a panel and explain that. But also you can watch the tutorial in the card. So if I just give this a list item, it will just pick all of those data because it goes to the first group, it picks the first one, goes to the second group, picks the first one. And now what I want to do is to flatten this. And after you flatten this, you can see that the first index is this point. So we will need the next point, the zero and the one. And we're good to go. We can simply use a distance and we will find the distance between this one and give this to the Z extrusion to have extracted and extrude that. Uh, we can also change the number to maybe 20 to increase the number of the sections. And we are good to go. You can also change the location of this point. You can see if I just move this, it will just cut off from the, sec uh, the selection after the metal ball just fades, okay? So you can always do that, but I prefer to make this quick because if you want to wait to see the results, it's going to take time. So if you want to do that, just simply go here and turn off, disable the surface, okay? Move your points. You can understand or you can just imagine what's happening to your model, right? And you can change the height of this. Let's just increase that to 200. Maybe we want more. Okay. And then we can also change the section curve. So you can see it, it just connects to each other. That's great for a table if you want to make a table that sits on the ground and it's stable. And then we can simply just turn this on. Okay, and here we go, and we can just bake this into layer one, and we have this model. Let's just go to the rendered section so you can see the results. This is really great. Uh, I will explain about this metal ball and the cocoon 
in the Grasshopper course. So if you want to know more about the cocoon, if you want to just draw curves and produce that, uh, you can make that in advance because in the cocoon you can simply just draw a curve and produce uh, any column you want and connect those. That is a great tutorial if you want to see. You can also watch the VivaWord tutorial. So thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel. And you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video, that corner, and see you next time.